So it's about 2 o'clock in the morning. And I know people are going to ask me about this. So it's been raining on and off for well, since about 9 p.m. This is, uh, I would assume, Irma, all the way up in Kentucky. It's uh, Tuesday around 9 o'clock in the morning. A uh, quick update is that I believe I go left here if I remember correctly. I'm in Red River Gorge by the way and yeah and uh, I've hiked down here a lot. This is almost like my backyard so Hiking the Chitauri Trace Trail, there's a funny story about why I even decided to through hike that trail. And uh, if you go back in my videos, you'll notice that there were a couple of times at the gorge that I've gotten injured over the years. And it was always when I was on Chitauri Trace Trail. You know, because Chitauri Trace Trail cuts right through Red River Gorge. So whenever I would have an injury, it was always on one of those sections. And it happened enough that I started to realize the occurrence that, oh, I'm on Trail 100. <laughs> so in a roundabout way, I said, well, maybe me and this trail need to go have a long talk and figure out what's going on. And that's kind of how the whole entire through hike of this trail began. I did research on it. They had just extended it like literally a few months before to 323 miles. Or actually it was 319 and then a couple months later it was 323. So uh, that's how it started. But So back about last night. So they were calling for rain which would be off of Irma. So when I started, I had uh, Harvey, and then which was last weekend, and now this weekend I have Irma, or actually it's a Tuesday, but you get what I'm saying. Just uh, just like nine days apart, yeah, nine days apart, and uh, they were calling for rain at five o'clock this morning, but it actually started raining at nine p.m. last night, and it wasn't like one of those rains that was like. Rain for a few minutes and then stop. It was a steady rain from like 9 p.m. until around um, around. This is the suspension bridge over the Red River Gorge. I've hiked this many times. They've done some work to it recently, still doing some work it looks. Seems to be. Huh. Seems to be a little more stable until you get about halfway out. Um, a lot of the boards. We're, we're actually uh, tore up or missing. Some of those are fixed. Looks like they've still got some more work to do there. That fence is making it kind of hard to get by. Being all bowed up. Well, up 
there's your sign. You basically go up and over the road and get on the trail that takes you toward Cloud Splitter and then Staircase, which I've hiked a million times and I'm kind of stuck right now. Do I want to hike the trail again, even though I've hiked that section many, 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 many times. I have numerous videos along that section. Or do I save myself some time and go to the right and hit Bison Way Trail and then reconnect? And I've got a long road walk today, so I'm actually considering doing that. So, uh, we'll see. I don't know yet. I only have a few minutes to figure it out, though. Well, I've got about 71 miles to go. I can't remember if that was um, the mileage indicators was before they did the reroute at Cave Run Lake so it might actually be like it might actually be 75 miles so somewhere between 70 and 75 miles I'll be done. Um, earlier though I was talking about and I don't think I finished because I've started to talk about this two or three times and uh, if I talked about it already then I'll just have to edit this part out. Um, so, there's a huge difference in mentality between a point-to-point -point hike and a through hike. And I'm starting to wonder if I'm really cut out for doing through hikes. And let me give you, uh, well, first let me say this. It's not that I'm not capable of doing them. I obviously am. Um, I'm fit enough. My base weight is low enough. Um, I, I don't have issues with going long periods of time without talking to other people or, you know, doing without showers and electricity and that sort of thing. All that stuff is no problem. But, you know, I'm 47 years old and throughout my whole entire life when I've hiked... I've done what I would call point-to-point -point hikes. So it's like you plan a hike based on what you want to see. And then when you see it, you get a reward that you made it and you got to see what it was you planned to go see. And I hike a lot at Red River Gorge and there's a lot of points of interest here. You know, I'll come down here and spend a day or a weekend or a whole entire week and I'll plan out all these hikes and every day there's one reward or more because it's a point of interest I plan to see that day. It's like you get there, you're like, oh yeah, this is awesome. And then the difference with the through hike is you don't get to plan the rewards and the rewards might be days, days apart, many days, three or four or five days before you see something really cool that you're just like, oh man, that's awesome. And uh, most of your time, at least on Chateau Trace, most of your time you're basically looking at foliage. <laughs> and just and There's not even anything in bloom here. Usually there's those yellow flowers or the blue ones or the red ones. But I mean, that's not to say Chateau Trace isn't a nice trail. I, I like the trail. I think that brings me to another thing where like my expectations of what I was going to see and experience ended up being different than what I actually got to see and experience. Um, when I think of Daniel Boone, I think of like, you know, <laughs> I, I think of the frontiersman who traveled the woods carrying a muzzle loader and, you know, somehow got in fairly decent enough with the Indians, enough where they nicknamed him, you know, the Big Turtle or whatever it is. And So I thought I would get to see, like, a lot of what Daniel Boone saw and experienced. And I don't think he saw a lot of asphalt and 
pavement and gravel roads. I think he'd be highly disappointed if he did. And like another thing I kind of noticed too, like I see wildlife at my house every day. I live in the country and I see wildlife, deer, rabbits, squirrels, possums, raccoons, turkeys, every single day. Out here on the trail I saw three deer at one time. Um, I think that was near Peters Mountain. And then I saw one bear between Cumberland Falls and Laurel Lake. And that's the only wildlife I've seen out here. I've not had any problems with any rodents getting into my bear bags. Sometimes I haven't been so tired or I didn't have a decent location to hang a bear bag. And I just set it on the ground right outside of where I was camping at. And no mice or anything tried to get into it. I'm not sure what that sign was. But it don't say anything now. Uh, so what happened to the wildlife? You know, where, where's the deer I would expect to scare walking down trails like this? Do they avoid it because too much human interaction? I, I was showing a, a guy I met along the road and uh, showing him all the deer and turkeys in my yard. And he basically lives in this area, and he was amazed at how many there were. You know, he act like, out here you really got to work for a deer or a turkey. <laughs> and where I'm from, they're, they're everywhere. Overpopulated. So, where's the wildlife? Where's like all the coolness factor is kind of what I'm saying. Not that... Not that there aren't some, because, you know, I take pictures of what I find to be cool, which is usually like rock shelters and rock ledges and waterfalls. They're there. They're just really few and far between. So, if you're going to be a through hiker, I, I'm kind of guessing it's the same way on like the Appalachian Trail too, that you have to be prepared to do many days without an awe factor. And I like that all factor, so what I'm trying to say is, I don't know that I would be a very good through hiker if I was to do this on a regular basis. You know, there's longer trails than Chateauwee that's been on my to-do list for many years. I like to do the Appalachian Trail. I like to do the Continental Divide. I like to do the PCT. You know, I like to be able to come away with the Triple Crown. I like to go up in Canada and do some hiking there. I like to go to you know, all kinds of other places and hike. But, uh, now that I've hiked a through hike, um, I, I'm really starting to doubt that I'd ever be able to do the Appalachian Trail. I might not be able to do the PCT. Now, it might be different if I wasn't doing it solo. I've pretty much, I've done this solo. The only person I get to talk to is me and the camera. I met uh, a pair of hikers yesterday. I remember the girl's name for some reason, Alex, because when he told me, the first thing I thought of was Orange is the New Black. <laughs> the guy's name I can't remember, but he asked me if I was a member of uh, Ultralight Reddit. And uh, comment below if you want people to know who you are. So uh, I met them, so I met those hikers, and the one guy that I spoke to that gave me the uh, ride off the pavement, I met him. And then I met the uh, Donna and Jerry at the cabin. And that's been the whole people that I've talked to in 197 miles. That, that's it. <laughs> as crazy as that sounds, that's, that's been it. So I'm going to stick to last year. I was calling this the loneliest trail. And I'm going to stick to that again. I mean... I think this is an awesome trail as far as like if you got somewhere that you want to go and get at peace with yourself without anybody interrupting you, this is the trail to do. 
absolutely without a doubt this is the trail to do you know if you want to go do some soul searching over a very long time and have plenty of time to think this is definitely the trail to do uh, Uh, one other thing, if you do decide to do this trail, I did a uh, six-day resupply, and I'm going to recommend you don't do that. Even though my base weight is at like seven and a half pounds, and with food and everything, I was at like right at 20 pounds. Your back knows the difference between 20 pounds and 18 pounds, trust me. Uh... When I resupplied, I could barely move that first day or two, and today it's gotten easier. And what, what's today? I've got four days of food in my backpack. <laughs> and it's walking's a whole lot easier today compared to the previous two days. So, I don't know if that also means that my leg is injury is starting to heal on its own. I doubt it. I ate literally a handful of vitamin I this morning. Um, about, well, I set the alarm for 6, and I took it at 6.30 thinking I'd hit the trail about 8. And I think it ended up being about 9 by the time I hit the trail because I had to take in a, it rained. I can't remember if I talked about this. I might as well talk about it over. I know I started it, but I think that's when the battery cut out. So it started raining about 9 p.m. last night. It rained all the way up until 6 o'clock this morning. Around 6, you can still hear a few drops hitting the tarp tent every now and then. So I laid there until 7 when it got daylight. And then I got up and got my bear bag down and dug my camp towel out and wiped the tarp tent down, all the water droplets. Because there was a breeze blowing just kind of like now. See the foliage moving? So there was a breeze blowing and I knew that that breeze, if I got a lot of that water off there, would finish drying out the tarp tent. There was some condensation on the inside too. I didn't worry about it. I probably should have, but I didn't. And then uh, I fixed some coffee and cleaned up camp and headed out. And by the time I got all that done, it ended up being like nine. Funny thing is at 10 o'clock, I stopped at the suspension bridge and literally ate all of my snacks for today. <laughs> I have no more snacks for the rest of the day. It's 11.36 now. Um, I have an extra meal left over from my zero day. I'm probably, when I get up here where the stream's at, I'm probably going to stop there and eat that meal, which will carry me over until in the evening probably. Where I will have another meal, today's actual meal. So that's kind of my goal. I still got corn chips that I haven't really been eating. You know, I, I put an ounce of corn chips or about 20 chips, 20 corn chips per day in a bag. And then um, I try to eat some every day. I use them for like when I'm really feeling down, when I need a lot of energy, because 10 corn chips is like 300 calories something silly a lot of fat uh, corn chips is like the lifesaver when you're running out of gas on a trail so I save those for when I'm feeling really down sometimes I'll integrate it with a meal um, like I like to take the corn chips and mix it in with chili mac dinners those are really good that way and sometimes I'll eat corn chips with like the tuna sensations as a dip and sometimes I'll use corn chips with like spam kind of also as a dip but I cut the spam into bits and pieces um, oh what else was I talking about oh so it rained I got up did camp ate all my meals that brings you to current um, I plan to get in I got a road walk and I might as well just get it out of the way today it's near Frenchburg and it's like a really long walk it puts me where I've got to go to like, let me look real quick. So I started at like 2.02 and I've got to get to like 2.22 to the next camp. So I'm going to have to do like a 20 mile trail mile day.
So I camped at uh, 202.13, and I've got to make it to, well, the pages don't even go far enough. So there you go. I think it's 222 something. Um, there's one camp at like 216, but I would have that done too quickly. So a 14 mile day is, you know, I'll, probably what I'll do, I'll evaluate when I get to that camp. Like, do I feel like I can go ahead and do the road walk and get to 222, or should I stay at 216? And that's where we're at. That's where I'm going to shut the camera off. Because I'm rattling, and I'm bad about that. I've already burned up 14 minutes of time. I'm sitting here at uh, where the trail for Lost Creek Branch goes up across the stream there. Chateauy goes to the left. I've actually done this uh, this part of the trail from Bison Way up to Lost Camp Creek over to... Uh, I knew I was going to forget the name of it once I started talking about it. Uh, either way, it makes a loop. About a, I don't know, 8 or 13 mile loop or something like that get back to bison way it's kind of uneventful except for early spring and late fall when flowers are in bloom um, not really very many like exciting things compared to the rest of the gorge but in early spring and fall it actually is pretty cool um, about five years ago actually on lost branch creek trail we ran into a bear it was in the fall and the only way we even knew that it was a bear was we saw the bear shit and the bear foot tracks. But as far as when we run into it, we scared it. And all we could see was this little ass end running through the overgrown weeds. But uh, it never turned to come toward us or anything. It literally ran as fast as it could away from us. So uh, that was about four or five years ago. Um, I've only hiked that trail twice once in the fall and once in the spring and um that's it so anyways i'm decided to have a kind of like a longer break here i got here about 1 45 i heated up some water i've got some chili mac there which is actually an extra chili mac from when i took my zero day and i just want to get it eight and over with and uh i've already drank almost 20 ounces of water sitting here I'll probably drink another 20 or take it with me when I leave and uh, preparing for this long road walk I'm either going to do a um, so according to the through hiker guide I am at 21098 and once you leave here the next camp isn't until 218 so that's eight more miles or 222 which would be 12 more miles and no matter which way i go most of that is road walking so i think i'm going to try to get to 222 tonight uh, almost two o'clock now by the time i eat it'll be 230 by the time i eat and get out of here it'll be 230 so it'll leave me about uh let's see 208 Yeah, so there's one campus that says nice small rock shelter at 218.24. And then down here at 222 it says keep right one spot possible on old ATV rear out trail and left. There's just not a lot of camps that are actually mentioned in this area. So, you know, worst, worst case is I have not stealth camped yet. The whole time I've hiked, stealth camp means where you're camping on private property and they don't know it because you're not really announcing that you're there does that make sense um, I'm not sure the legalities of it but I've had to do it numerous times where I've gotten caught in places where I shouldn't be um, and just simply not enough energy to get out of there so some hikers will do it um, 
in between locations say they're going from one trail system to another and uh, there's quite a distance between the two and still camp you know along old roads or that seldom have traffic or out in someone's pasture that kind of thing so either way I'm gonna go ahead and eat get out of here and I'll update you later So I'm sitting here at uh, Tar Ridge Road, which is a uh, US KY 77 and US 460, which is just outside of Frenchburg. Um, earlier today, I had my spoon that I eat with break, and I tried to super glue it and duct tape it without success. So I have somebody bringing me a new spoon. Um, it's going to cut me a couple miles short for the day. It's going to cut me a couple miles short for the day, but I still did, you know, at least 15 or 16 miles overall by the time I get to a camp spot. Um, then I've got basically uh, three or four more days and I'll have this wrapped up. Uh, hopefully that Irma stays away. We had the rain overnight last night, but nothing else the rest of today. So uh, hopefully Irma stays away and I can get this done in three or four days. I'll update you later.